or in the central nervous system. Your, your nervous system can be divided into the central nervous system, including the brain, the spinal cord. You also have the peripheral nervous system, including those nerves. You have the cranial nerves and spinal nerves. And your brain is well protected inside by the skull and the meninges, that's the membrane, covered your brain. Humans' brain have a lot of wrinkles and the purpose is to increase the surface area. The more wrinkles you have, the more surface area you can put more neurons in. And those wrinkles are moving in, moving out. The moving out is called the gyrus and moving in is called the sulcus. So your, your brain have a lot of sulcus, gyrus, sulcus, gyrus. And if they move in a lot, it's called a fissure. And when we count the brain, the brain can be divided into the, the white part and the gray part. The gray part we call the gray matter, including the cerebral cortex, is gray. And also some nuclei inside, we call the basal nuclei, and they're gray. They're gray because that's where the cell body is located. And the other structure we call the white matter, they are white because they are myelinated axon. So that's your brain, we you found the cortex, that's the gray matter. And inside most of them are the white matter. And these are the cerebral nuclei, also called the basal nuclei. And these are the cell body located. Your brain is covered by the membrane called meninges. There are actually three layers. You have the pia, arachnoid, and dura. Pia is the one touch the brain, so that's the soft layer. And dura, that's the one touch outside, so that's the that's a very top layer. You're gonna touch the skull. So the pia layer is this inner layer. Uh, it's it's made of areola connective tissue, so that's the 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 soft connective tissue touch the brain. And the middle layer is called arachnoid, and that's the it's a it's a thicker layer. They also have some space, so called a subarachnoid space. So this layer, that's the one with uh, cerebral spinal fluid, the, the liquid produced cover your cover your brain. It also stay in this layer. And the outside layer is dura. Dura is the top layer. So dura actually can be divided into two layers. The deeper layer and and outside layer, and outside the dura is called the epidural space, and this space will touch the between the dura and the skull, and also you have CSF coverage in the spinal cord. They actually have a lot of fat covered in the sub uh, epidural space. And when we talk about the epidural surgery, it's actually put the local anesthesia into the epidural space so we can block the pain sensation and these are the three layers of meninges the pia layer touch the brain arachnoid is a bigger space so you can have CSF cover this and outside is dura your brain you have some empty space we call them ventricles and they are not covered with air, they are covered with cerebral spinal fluid. You totally have four different ventricles. And you have two big lateral ventricles that are separated by septum pellu pellucidum. So there's this septum pellucidum. And you have the left and right two lateral ventricles. And together you will go through the interventricular foramen and go to the third ventricle. It's in the midbrain dicephalon area. And together it will go down uh, through the cerebral aqueduct, go to the fourth ventricle. And from the fourth ventricle, it will go uh, through the central canal and go to your spinal cord. So they are all connected together. And this shows you the four ventricles, two lateral ventricle, and go to the third ventricle. That's in your uh, thalamus area, third ventricle. And it will go down to the through the cerebral aqueduct or to the fourth ventricle is between your cerebellum and your brain stem and this will keep going down through the central canal go to your whole spinal cord and they all fill with cerebral spinal fluid
The cerebrospinal fluid is a liquid. It's very similar to plasma, uh, with a little bit uh, different concentration of salt. Its function is cushion function, uh, make your help the 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 brain float it in in those liquid, and also it provides nutrients and support the cells. And CSF are produced by colloid plexus. That's the inside the colloid plexus, that's inside the ventricle, and you have the epidermal cells, uh, that's one of the glial cells. Their main job is to produce CSF. And CSF is similar to your plasma. You just have a little bit more of the salt uh, because your, your neurons need those salts to generate action potential. So that's your ventricles and choroid plexus. Your epidermal cells they produce CSF. And the CSF will flow, so eventually they go back to your, your vein system. It will flow into the arachnoid villi and drain into the dura venous sinus, eventually go back to your body circulation. So they will go through this and eventually go back to your circulation. And now let's look at the brain. Your brain has the original brain area called the brain stem. It can be divided into the midbrain, the pons, and medulla oblongata. So sometimes uh, scientists call this the leader's brain. This is the one control a lot of important physiological functions like your heart rate, your breathing. And outside you have a fancy cerebrum or called cerebral cortex. That's what makes us human. And human, we have a lot of wrinkles, those uh, sulcus gyrus that are in the cerebrum. And to connect these two together, you have the dicephalon. So dicephalon is the connection. Uh, in the dicephalon, the big structure called thalamus, that's the like the train station. All the information from your brain stem go to the cortex, or from the cortex move out, need to go through the, go through the dicephalon. And this one is cerebellum. Cerebellum is like a small calculator you put on. Uh, its function is to calculate to balance your body. So you, you, in order to balance your body, you need a lot of good muscle coordination. And that's cerebellum. And cerebellum can easily be affected by alcohol. So when you get drunk, this cerebellum function is not functioning well. So you, you, don't, you can still walk, but you don't walk uh, pretty smoothly because cerebellum being compromised. Your left brain and right brain, they are separated by the longitudinal fissure. And they were connected by corpus callosum. Corpus callosum is this wide structure. So it's super big, it's wide, so it's, it's, it's the axon. So the corpus callosum is the super high way to connect your two brains together. And this is your brain. This longitudinal fissure, and you have two hemispheres left hemisphere, right hemisphere. And this line called the central sulcus. So the central sulcus separates your frontal lobe away from your parietal lobe. And this area, this is moving out called the gyrus, this is called the precentral gyrus. This is where your motor cortex is located. And this one is called the post-central gyrus. That's where your somatosensory cortex, your body sensations, located. Your brain divides into different lobes. So you have the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and occipital lobe. And uh, they, they share the same name as the, the bone. So you have the frontal bone, parietal bone. They share the same name. And this area, when you peel the frontal lobe away from the temporal lobe, you found this small area called insula. And this is a very small area. Sometimes the textbook called uh, uh, the fifth uh, lobe. And other times, most textbooks actually call it a separate area. So you have four traditional lobes, frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital. And this area, why is this important? Because your chemical senses, your, your gustatory sensation, uh, will go into this area, insula.
your brain can be divided into different lobes. So frontal, parietal, occipital, temporal. Each lobe have their different function. Like the temporal lobe is mainly for auditory. Occipital lobe, and that's for your visual function. Your parietal lobe is mainly your sensation, like somatosensory. It's in the post-central gyrus. That's your central sulcus. So this is frontal lobe. Frontal lobe, you have the motor function, like this one, the pre-central gyrus. That's your motor cortex. Also, you have all the frontal lobe for the reasoning, high-level reasoning function. And this is called the Wernicke area. This is uh, divided, identified by a, a German surgeon. And the Wernicke area is the area for language function, language speaking. So if you damage this area, you could not talk. Oh, sorry, language understanding. Another area called the Broca area is the language and language speaking. Uh, Wernicke area is for language understanding. So it's in the uh, sensory area for understanding language, language. So if you damage this area, you can talk, but your language is, is making no sense. If you damage the Broca area, Broca area is the language speaking. So some stroke patient damaged the Broca area. They actually could not, could not talk. So that's the Broca area. So these two areas, they're responsible for language. Uh, Wernicke area is a language comprehension. So they found it in stroke patient that damaged the Wernicke area. And they, they, they can talk, but their language have no meaning. It's like they put, just randomly put the word together. And if they damage the Broca area, they can understand what you say, but they could not talk back. And that's because the, the word formation is in the Broca area. So it's closer to the motor area. And Wernicke area is closer to the sensory area. And both of them very unique. You only have them in the left hemisphere. You don't have the language area in the right hemisphere. So in human, the language area only exists in the left hemisphere, not the right hemisphere. And your brain is lateralized. Our left brain control the right side body. Our right brain control the left side body. So if you have a stroke on the left area, you actually damage the right side body. You can, you paralyze the right side body. And if it happens on the right air, right brain, you paralyze the left side body. Except the vision, because we put the two eyes in the front. So the vision is if the visual come from the right visual field the object come from the right visual field. It will go to the both eye, but eventually it will go to the left visual cortex being analyzed. If it come from the left visual field, it will, it will go to your two eye, but eventually it will be analyzed on the right visual field. Uh, right right uh, occipital lobe. So it's, the brain is lateralized. It's not just human, also all the animals, the dog, the cat, uh, the rat, they are the same. The left side control the right side body. The right brain control the left side body. Okay, let's take a break.